Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Top Fly Pod. You know what it is. You know, you know what we're here to do. Back in studio today, beautiful Austin, Texas. The Eclipse Day. I'm with the boys. We got B here to my left. We got Bali here to my right. Excited to talk about Austin FC. What a match we got here in store tonight for the episode. We're starting off with you, my G, Bali. Switching it up. How are you doing tonight, mate? Man, I'm doing great. You know, uh, man, I, I party hard this weekend. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, man. It, it, was a, it was a crazy weekend, but it was worth it. Yeah. I was happy. I was excited. Dude, I, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen you smile on this yeah, podcast. It's, it's been a long time, man. It's been a long time, but you know, happy days are coming. Hopefully. Happy days are hopefully, coming. Hopefully. Hopefully. Are you hearing this beat? Hopefully. Damn, optimism? Optim is that optimism? I'm the hearing? eclipse, bro. The eclipse. The eclipse, bro. <laughs> how you doing, B? Yeah, doing good, bro. I mean, I'm, I'm right there with Bali, man. I had a long weekend, but uh, we're here to talk about the game, possibly... One of the best games in our history. I mean, we'll get to it, but yeah. Calma. We've had playoff well, wins yeah, at the queue. Yeah, I'm just saying, Calma. I said one of, one of, one of. Okay, we'll all right. But anyways, we're about to get into the episode. But before, we do want to send a shout out to all of our Patreon and Discord members. We're getting uh, new members, it feels like, almost every day. And we just want to send a big shout out. We're going to have a new round of stickers and swag and little merch go out. So uh, keep an eye out. going to send out that uh, notification out soon. So Patreon members, be on the lookout for that. But boys, let's get into the episode because we got to get it rolling. A lot to talk about. It was a seven-goal thriller in Austin, Texas at Q2 Stadium. You were there. I was there. B, you were there as well. Maybe you had a bit of a closer seat than anybody. You were down at that field level getting the pictures. We posted some today. You you captured the moment where Drusi was maybe giving some angry or some frustrated indications at uh, Stuver. You caught the moment when he was about to take that PK. I mean, just real quick, some some on the surface overall thoughts uh, on the match from from your point of view last night. Yeah, or I mean, from Saturday night. Yeah, from Saturday. Yeah, bro. I mean, look, we started off the vibe was there, Q2 packed as per usual. Um, but then we would go down, and 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 the vibe was like again, like oh man. But the rapid fire of goals, bro. I've never been at Q2. Uh, this is the first. I mean, obviously, it's three goals in six minutes. Unheard of. But the rapid fire, you know, I was I was recording the fans getting lit. I was trying to post on the story. Boom, another goal. Oh, let me record it and get some pictures. Okay, now let, let me go through it. Let me post. No, boom, another goal. So it was just mayhem for six minutes, bro. It was the, the craziest six minutes at Q2 Stadium ever, bro. It was mayhem. It was mayhem, Absolute bro. Absolute mayhem. 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 Yeah. And then, yeah, I caught Stuber. I mean, uh, uh, Drusy. It was like after uh, Stuber came out for a ball that was he shouldn't have. And uh, Drusy got on his ass. You bro. know, it, it's it's so funny, and people listening to the pod that have kept up with the pod will maybe agree with this take that I'm about to drop. People might say that you two are very different. You might have some kind of takes while Bali has the, the, the different side of the coin takes. But you guys are very similar. You caught that moment with your camera, yeah. and Bali caught that moment as it was happening, too, from where we were sitting. Because, Bali, you pulled me to the side, and you were like, look, 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 look at Seba. Look at Drusy. Look what he's doing. So... I kind of want to bring you in on that. What was your overall thoughts from last night's match? And kind of what were you thinking whenever that moment happened when Drusi was given that indication to Stuber where he looked like he was frustrated? Yeah, t to me, it was John giving him, give, talking to Stuber at first because uh, John got a card. I think it was just the poor distribution by Stuber from the back, first half, you know, just putting players in a tough spot. And you saw our, uh, our captain go up and, and talk to the... To Stuber and let him know that hey man, it's, let's improve, let's let's improve on those passing and um he did second half, okay. but it was it was crazy to see Drusi just approach Stuber and let him know like hey man like kind of give him a little attitude. Yeah, I mean the pictures I don't think do justice because bro he was pissed. Yeah, he, he was, was mad. Pissed. He was, he was mad. Yeah, he was pissed. Was and and Stuber wasn't just Stuber wasn't just taking it. He was also like like nah bro like there were it was like a it was a back and forth. It wasn't just like oh. Okay. I mean those are two leaders yeah. exactly. going at it. Exactly. This team. Those are two titans. Yeah. Which you, you love to see that. You yeah, love yeah, to see yeah, that. Yeah. You love to yeah. see that. But and that kind of goes with this point I want to make is on this podcast we said recently I was like hey if we get this kind of juicy for this match we're gonna win. And I, I feel like we're getting the same Drusy consistently, at least for the last two matches, right? You could argue the last three. But honestly, the last two matches, we've seen a Seba that is that MVP from 2022. That is that guy that can carry this team on his back. B, you mentioned, uh, uh, what was it, two weeks ago, how Drusy needed to, to ask for the ball, to want to drive. We've seen that from him the past couple of weeks. And what, what has happened? Six points. But Thoughts the, on that? The, the thing is, though, yes, you're correct. Um... But this kid, he can't, he can't do this forever, bro. Like we're gonna sure. need someone else to kind of step up and take the load because, for the first couple of games where he was injured, 
a lot of fans were like, man, this this is this this can't just be a one player. You know, look, I'm happy for Drew. I I I, I want to see this juicy every game, but are we? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think so, yeah. bro, but um I hope we can keep going, man. Yeah. Now, real quick, here's some information from Austin FC Communications at Austin FC PR on X or Twitter. They say Austin FC's first three goals in Saturday's victory over San Jose all scored within five minutes of each other were the fastest three consecutive goals in club excuse me, in club history. Uh, they also go on to say, uh, they put out this tweet, Sebastian Drusi's match winner in the 101st minute was the latest ever Austin FC goal. Sebastian Drusi has now scored both the earliest and the latest goals in club history. And one more thing I'm going to read from their Twitter account. Last night or Saturday night's attendance of 20,738 marked the 58th consecutive MLS home sellout for Austin FC, extending the league's longest active streak. It's still going on, bro. It's going to uh, keep yeah, going, bro. Yeah, but that's you, not... That, let's be real. I mean, that's... Do you buy into it? I don't buy into but it. But uh, I don't know. I feel, technically, I mean, it's I, a sellout. Technically, I mean, right? Yeah, technically. There's very few seats that yeah, have been left empty, at least the last two matches. I will say la- the San Jose and the, the Dallas game, both games were, were, were insane. Were just packed. Packed, you packed, know? Packed, bro. Yeah. It hasn't been like that for a while. Bro, there was people that were standing on the stairs. Yeah, it yeah. hasn't been like that for a while. Yeah, bro. It hasn't been yeah. like that for a while. Yeah, yeah for sure. A, a quick question: I know Primo's not here uh, to to look it up, but uh, if if that's the latest goal in Austin FC history, I believe it. But yeah, you, I would think that it would rank among the latest goals in MLS history. Is there? Has there? Because that's, that's a good. That's a good question. What, that's what time good, that's was it clocked question. in that goal? It was like a hundred and like, like one hundred two. I bro, that's like gotta be one of the latest goals. Plus, it was like ninety plus eleven. Or ninety, 90 plus, plus bro, that's gotta be one of the latest goals of all time. Ninety plus eleven. Am I? Are, has there we been need, that we many? Need to check in on that. We did check in on primo's that. Primo's not here. Hey, primo, check it out. Uh, primo, oh, he's uh, not. Uh, 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 no one's there. It's not here. Not here. Not here. I don't even know if this is recording, so I don't even. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up right now. But all right, guys. Hey, let's get into a little bit of the highlights from the seven goal thriller that happened in Austin, Texas, here on Saturday. Now, minute 19, San Jose, they go up 1-0 after a poor clearance from both center backs, which leads to a cross at the back post that no one tracks. It's an easy header for Marie. He gets the first one. And I want to talk about this here a little bit because Julio Cascante deserves a little bit of criticism. We've given him a lot of praise in, in recent uh, weeks, in recent episodes here on Top Flight, but I think he needs to be talked about here in this, in this action because uh, he doesn't track back at the back post, and it's just a simple tap-in header pretty much. And if he would have tracked back, I think there would have been more contention. He would have gotten his big old head on it, maybe his curly hair, and it would have been cleared out to a corner kick or maybe better cleared out into the um, into the opponent side of the field. But, Bali, any uh, thoughts on that uh, on that goal? Yeah, just poor clearance by Julio. You know, just all around our, our defense was, was struggling, you know, first half. You know, also John being exposed on that right side. I mean, I think this game, you, you saw that, you know, John Gallagher, you know, he's not a right back. You know, he's not a defender. The guy... I feel like him being on the wing, attacking, going forward, that that's his game. You know, that's his game. So we kind of saw him being exposed this game on that right side. But he improved. The team improved. The team fought back, which is what matters. Now here on the highlights, bro, you can see some some girl just flicking off. Yeah, I, saw, <laughs> I was there. I was there. Bro. You can yeah. see her just flicking them off. The uh, San Jose forward, but Espinosa, Wolf mentioned how this guy was going to be dangerous tonight. He's the one that gets the cross into the back post, dangerous cross. And B, your thoughts on that goal that, that San Jose scored it went up minute 19. It was one Yeah, nil. it was definitely a, a, a really shaky start defensively. Going against bro. plans. Going against plans. I mean, before this game, before it last game, when we would concede early or concede first, I mean, you would. I mean, you would the morale would just be destroyed. Hundred um, percent. So there I was, was no fight I was after nervous. that. I was nervous. Like, oh man, you know, we can't concede first because uh, how the way things have been going, our vibe, it's not good. But it's funny know. that you say you were nervous, uh, uh, Daniel. Lost Deku. Yeah. Okay. Little yeah. Daniel. Uh, he he was uh, he was watching the uh, game with us, and he said that at halftime I looked pouty. That I was in. Pouty. That I was <laughs> that in was my feelings. I was like, bro, I'm just chilling. You, you, but you were. You so were. You were. Pouting? You were, sad, you were sad. You I were sad. I was sad. I was nervous, bro. Yeah. I, it, it was not looking good. It Isn't was not pouting good. like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, like that. Just like that. <laughs> it, it is like that. <laughs> you, yes. were, you were pouting, brother. Really? I Top wasn't bro. doing Top that. Of the I wasn't doing that. But he he said that I was. But I believe him. I believe, uh, I believe him too. I don't don't believe him. Don't believe him, mate. <laughs> 
Now, a minute 26, San Jose and Palmeri, they weren't done there. They went up 2-0 in the first half. Hector uh, just backed up and backed up, inviting Marie into the box. He let off a sh uh, bit of a cracker of a shot, a rocket, and it doubled his goal tally in the San Jose lead as well. But it was called back, Bali, because I think he impeded the goalkeeper's vision. One of the players impeded the goalkeeper's vision. But it could have been 2-0 very early on. Un very thankfully, fortunately, it gets called back. Any uh, thoughts on that action that Austin FC could have been down? Could have been down at that moment too. No. Yeah, man. Early warning signs. You know, early warning. Yeah. We, sh we should have learned from it, but we oh, didn't. Yeah. You know, they they came back and, and they scored on us again. But yeah, I think Hector should have attacked them quicker. You know, he just gave them too much space. And what a shot! I mean, what a goal by, by Dallas. That was a great goal. It was it was great. great finish. But thankfully, it got called back. Thankfully, it Thank did. Stewart thankfully. was left like a statue. By the way, yeah, he did. Usually, he makes a save. And, uh, usually, he makes a bit of a save. And I was I was confused. Like, why didn't he go? Bro, for he it? had an off day. He had yeah, off but, but he did okay. he did save a lot though. He did save he did, a lot. He did, he did, he did, he did, he did yeah. Now B the the craziness didn't stop there at Q2 Stadium because minute 35, Hader O'Brien, he thinks he has the equalizer mate, and his first goal for Austin MC, he goes, he celebrates with his baby girl. And me as a as a new father, you know, I have a girl also. I I, I try to put myself in his shoes. I would have been heated, bro. Oh man. Especially, I would have been heated, bro. <laughs> Especially that he is the goal last week where he yeah he yeah, same off. thing same I think thing he was looking for her right he thinking. was looking for her yeah, bro. bro and then again and then oh, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate lad yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was a foul by Hector and I think Soft. it was a foul. I think it was a foul. I think it was. No, I actually talked to Hector after the game, and he told me, "Man, that was soft." Oh, that was soft. And I think it was soft too, man. Yeah. But the the I mean the 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 player you know did did his job you know he played it. The ref low key seemed like he was on Austin's side the whole match, but that instance, I wish he would have just let it go. But hey, it is what it is. Now, yeah. halftime, we move on. Minute fifty three, Hadro Brian, he has a header blocked by San Jose defender's arm or hand. You could say that maybe it was close to his body. You could say that it was leaving his body, making his himself bigger in front of the goal. But the referee says no PK, and everybody was going crazy. The boo started coming. Drusi was absolutely just fired up in the referee's face mate b what was your thoughts on that mate there was no pk given it didn't really matter because the goal started raining after that but at that point you were thinking maybe it's not austin fc's night no i mean at that point we were looking for anything any little lifeline i mean we ended up getting one but you know it just yeah i mean i get it i get i get the decision bro you know it is what it is i get i get it you get it I get it. To bro. me, it's a I pen, 100. percent To you, it's a pen, 100. percent I think, I think it was a pen. I think it was a pen. I think it was a pen. I think that they, they balled it. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see, man. We'll Far. see. Do your now, job. <laughs> now, minute 56. We move on. Minute 56. Ring with a poor pass. He leaves Hector exposed upfield. San Jose counters. Danny and Heinzak are the only ones defending. Cascante was just left upfield. Hector was also left upfield. I said he was left a bit exposed. Ibovici has a shot. Stuver saves a bit, but in the end, he puts it into the back of the net. There, it was 2-0 or 0-2, whatever you want to say. It was a disaster at Q2 at that point, mate. At that point, we felt like there was there was no end to this. There was no way to get out of it positively. We just maybe get one back and then we were into the game, but it was 2-0 at that point, Bali. What was going through your mind at that point? I'll be real. It's over. That's what I thought. It's over. It's done. Pack it up. But... <laughs> Something else happened. Something else happened. Something, else happened. something, something, else something happened. very, 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 very nice. What I noticed good. it it when when that second goal went in, bro, I caught the just I just look at I looked at the fans. It hit them, bro. Yeah. It hit them like hard. I could just see the vibe. It just went like, hmm. It just like because we're so used to like if we concede one, let alone two, we just didn't have seen any evidence that we could claw back yeah. what we saw. But hey. This game was different, bro. Yeah. There was a gleam of hope, mate. Diego Rubio, I, I think we really need to give this guy his praise, yeah. his flowers, since he's came into the club. And we've said this before getting on, on, on set. We were saying how Roto's guys are cooking. Those guys are absolutely cooking, mate. They're the, they're the only ones that have been scoring goals, and it's absolutely fantastic. Rubio earns the PK. You could say it was soft. You could say it was a flop. I think it's just experience being in the league, knowing what kind of contact in the box is worthy of a PK, whether it's bare minimum or maximum. He earns the PK, and who steps up? Sebastian Drusi, the MVP, the owner of Austin FC pretty much. I know it's pre-court, but it's really Drusi. Yeah. Did you see the whip? He yeah. has a ghost. The Rolls hey, Royce. Rolls Did you see the Rolls Royce? Yeah, Rolls Royce ghost, son. He, he might have. Wait. He, does he have a better car than Anthony pre-court? 
For can sure. We check he, that? He can definitely we check got better that? drip I mean, for sure. That, oh my days, bro. I mean, we looked at it before. I mean, that that car's around 300, 350, 000. 300, 000. 300, 000. 300, 000. That's not much to do. He's only like six no. million a year. Yeah, true. Well, that's, plus he has that's Lambo. not the only whip he got. Yeah, he but Lambo. this is but this is why he earns those big bucks. Because yes. he puts the penalty, yes. the goal, yes. the ball into the back of the net, earning his goal at Austin at uh, at Austin at Q2 Stadium on Saturday night. But they didn't stop there. We get a long throw in from John Gallagher. Like the Nick Lima days, respect yeah. to him. He's now with the Revs, yeah. but he puts it into the box. It kind of bobbles into the in, in the area. Javier Obriana is left unmarked, and this time, guys, yeah. this time it counts. There's no way that it's offsides. Javier Obriana celebrates. He, sh- I don't know if he was looking for his baby girl this time because he went to right to uh, Valencia. <laughs> Valencia, and he did the little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're just dancing. <laughs> You know, yeah. hey, hey, he looked good. He looked good dancing. Yeah, yeah. They, they could dance. They hey, it. Valencia and Javier yeah, can yeah. dance. Yeah. Yeah. At that point, mate, 2-2. Two, two. What'd yeah. you think? I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Damn. I, I was excited. The fans were were getting excited. The, the momentum was, was, was growing. Oh, yeah. But then then what, what happened after was, was, was that's the, the, the best that's part, the big I think. One. Eh, well, we can we can wait a little bit because it wasn't just you know peaches and cream after that. Now, well, actually, it was minute sixty six. <laughs> Guillermo Biro he sends a rocket into the bottom corner from about thirty yards out, bro. I was going absolutely wild when this happened. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it because it was just it seemed too perfect. I yeah. couldn't. I was like, no, these guys really didn't. They, there's no way we just pulled it off. There's no way we just didn't pull it off. And Guillermo Biru, he shows maybe why Rodo went after this guy, why he paid uh, whatever fee it was for him, and they brought him to uh, MLS. And maybe this is one of the characteristics that Rodo saw in this guy and says, hey, welcome to Austin FC. Your thoughts on that, B? Golazo, bro. Golazo. The definition of a golazo, Definition, bro. definition, man. To go up after you just scored two goals in like four or five minutes, six minutes, three goals with that type of goal, golazo, range, shot, sniper. Bali made this point before we recorded, bro. The stadium exploded, brother. They really, it, it really exploded, did. Exploded, really did. brother. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't want to take your take, Bali, but you said it was like one of the loudest the stadium has has been, and I agree, bro. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, bro, it was loud. It was scenes. crazy. Scenes, scenes, mate. Scenes. yeah, but scenes. But unfortunately, Guillermo Viru doesn't get the winner. The shocking events continued because San Jose equalizes, mate. It's 3-3, around minute 74. I don't know what happened there because it was, I think it was Ring, the one that gave the the, the poor pass. Hector gets uh, left uh, exposed upfield. I believe that was the instance there. It doesn't matter because it was it Pellegrino, the San Jose fo- uh, forward winger, whatever he was, he scores it. Brad Stuver could have done a bit better. You said Stuver had a bit of an off night. I kind of agree with your point on that. I feel like for his av- standards. For his standards. Yeah. I feel like Stuver on, on his best saves that. Did we get the best stuver against San Jose? It didn't matter because we get those, those three points, but you can see three, like Bali said earlier, red flags. Now, yeah. at that point, one point, I don't know if that would have been good enough for Austin FC. There was a lot of talk going into this game saying that, hey, we're going to do better. We were going to start executing. Joshua was saying a lot of that stuff coming into this game. So at one point, you were thinking, one point, hmm, maybe that's good enough for Austin FC, but it's probably not. Now, Bali, in the end, so I send Drusi, I, I mean, we got to spend maybe a minute or two on this because I compared it to Cristiano Ronaldo-esque in the Champions League, mate. Because the way that this play starts, the way that this play starts, you say, oh, Gallagher put it into the box and then Zardes lays it off. But ladies and gentlemen, back it up just a little bit because Sebastian Drusi, he gets the ball in the midfield, guys. He's looking for an outlet. Nobody's asking for the ball. He gives it to Danny. Danny gives it back to Drusi, I believe. But anyways, the ball somehow ends up to Gallagher from Drusi's start, from Drusi's hunger, from his creation. B, you were talking about that earlier, uh, earlier in, what was it, two, three weeks ago maybe. But anyways, the ball gets to Gallagher finally. It finds Zardis. He lays it off. Drusi, right-footed, outside the boot, slots it into the back of the net. B, 4-3. Last, mean, last kick of the game, mate. I, I caught it on, on video from far, but I caught it. Um, I mean, oh, my God, bro. I mean, with the last kick of the game. And, look, I, I think Drusi's shot, he just he just hit it how it came. But I think that uh, Zardis is a little bit of credit for just laying it off for him, bro. Like, it reminds me of, like, um. Just that's what that's what you would want from your number nine, bro. Like, 100%. Something like that. He just he just he just left it right there for Drusy. Have a crack at it, mate. And he did, bro. And 
I mean, the tres dedos, pretty much. Pretty much. In, in, in the back of the net, bro, running to the corner with the Jude Bellingham celebration. It seems like he was looking at, at for somebody or something, but he... he He's probably looking for Bali. <laughs> He's probably looking for That's Bali. what we were saying. But, yeah, bro, I mean, like I said last part, bro. Like I said, Drusy is that guy, bro. He's that guy. He's saucy with it, bro. He's live with it, bro. I, I wouldn't go as far as, like my G Tucker say, maybe better than Messi, but... He is live with it, bro. He is that guy for us, and we're witnessing. We're, we're we've already seen it, but we're seeing it again. What he's capable of, bro. These results. I mean, he's earning his money, bro. He can get another Rolls Royce if he wants to, oh, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, he probably has three already. Nah, relax, relax. He probably has three already, mate. Not even gonna cap, but Drusy Dior Bali. Just, just, just real quick. Just give me, give me some, some, some words on him. No, you, you said it. You know, I mean, it's, it's been Drusy. It's been Drusy. But now, 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 you know, he's turning into Drusy Dior. You know, it's seven he's in his games bag. in the season. He's in his bag now. And now, he now, he, now, he's he making was it hurt. Right. He's coming back from an injury. It's seven games in the season. I mean, he's getting yeah. into form. Yeah. You he gotta is, give him time. He's yeah. Austin FC though. Bro. Yeah, I mean, he's our best player. We need him. Hundred percent. We need him, and um, he's our DP. He's got the big money. And like I said, now he's Drusy Dior. Now he's in his bag. Now, now it's easy money. Now he's making it rain. Now he's yeah. feeling himself. Yeah. And it, it, the more that he plays, the more he feels himself, the more he, he looks good. It's going to make us look good. And um, hopefully he continues. Now, we boys, need now, boys, quick question, Bali. You can go first on this one. Uh, best goal of the night? Beatles. Beatles. I mean, best I think – just just think about it. You know, he's – Beatles never played in a stadium as big as, as Q2, yeah. as packed as Q2, you know? That was he, was, he, he was playing in Brazil, second division. You know, but I think he, there was like an FA style, FA Cup style tournament that he might have played in. That he might have played against Palmeiras, maybe. Okay, Maracana regardless, you know, yeah. th that hasn't been that stadium was louder than that's been the loudest stadium yeah. he's ever been at uh, last night. You okay. know, that might be okay, a hot okay, take. Okay, just okay. imagine, take, just, bro. just imagine the goal, the feeling. Yeah, bro. I mean, I, I, I bet he called Brazil right after the match. Yeah. Called his parents. Called his family. Yeah. Mitty Gulazo, mommy. Gulazo. Yeah. Gulazo. Gulazo. Yeah. Gulazo. Damn. Imagine that feeling. Imagine that feeling, bro. Imagine that feeling. Feeling, bro. I mean, and when that going in, my ears like hurt, bro. Like they right. started stinging, bro. Like, oh, I loud. couldn't believe it. It was, it was bro, an amazing. You, you goal. legit almost passed out. I almost passed. No, that almost bro, passed out. I never. I haven't felt like that since uh, John Gallagher's first goal IQ two. Damn, bro. That's a no, 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 no. Like hold on. That's a crazy comparison, like that. bro. That's like a that. wild allegation. I haven't felt like I that. I mean, recency nah. bias is in place. I haven't felt like that. Recency bias. I mean, recency when bias. we beat RSL playoffs, that yeah. was also a great that feeling. Awesome. When you beat but, Dallas in playoffs, but Beatles shot just yeah, the boss, the cojones to take yeah, that shot. Bro. Yeah, it I was also a. A, honestly. You're right because the ball was going between Beetle and Drusy, and yeah. they both were going for They're it. They both were going for it. The 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 balls of, of Beetle to say, yeah. "Seba, yeah. move, I got this." Yeah. And honestly, Boom. Seba, Seba, <laughs> what did you say? Seba, maybe the moment he saw Beetle take the shot, Seba's probably like, "What are you doing?" And then boom, boom. I, it kind of takes you back to when um, Agüero was oh, telling uh, Company. Again. Was telling company, oh, Vini, yeah, Vini, don't, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot, shoot, don't shoot Vini, Vini. Bangs it in. Bang, it was against Chelsea, it too. It was against Leicester City, mate. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. my fault. I, it was uh, blue. It was blue. It was my yeah, fault, my yeah, fault. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah, about yeah. that. No, you always be doing I'm sorry about that. that. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to sneak that. some shots in there. Hey, okay, we get, uh, one more question I have here, guys. Austin scores four but concedes three. Is that a red flag? 2022 oh, vibes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a definitely a red flag. Like, uh, we can't be coming down from 2-0 every game, bro. Like, call me from... Now I'm going to bring Madrid. Homie from the fan reaction says, we're not Real Madrid. We can't be coming back every game, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. And great I agree team. with him. Yeah. I agree with him, bro. We can't be we, – we, look, it was a great win. Amazing memories, historic for me. But we can't be doing that every game. Bro. We can't be going down to, to nil every game. Bro. Okay, okay. We just can't. We, we just can't. That's true. Bali, take on that. I agree, man. There's, I mean, this is our, – our defense, again, we're struggling. You know, yeah. when are we going to find answers in the back? You know, um, we, we, we went out and we got Leo. He's injured, and now we're hoping that hindsight can can give us something. He's looking okay, but still I struggling on the back. I wouldn't be surprised if Matt comes in. Matt Head just has yeah. to come in. Where, yeah. Where's even, Matt? Even Matt came in, and I, I mean, I wasn't really feeling Matt. Bro, I think I, I think I think Hansai um, uh, got the nod for his performances. I think Wolf said, "You know what? You've been playing. You've been playing well. Let's let's keep it going." And I think we've seen like, all right, maybe let's try Matt again. You know, it's like you said, bro. It's Julio and who. It's you know? Julio yeah. and who? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Julio it's true. and who? It's true. We're struggling in the back. We need answers bad. Hopefully, Rolo has them. I think in the oh, summer. Oh, bro, look. Yeah. I think in the bro, summer. Bro, I think bro, in the room hey, is hey, going to cook. Are you going to make a point? Are you going to make a point? I think I'm going to make a point, bro. Go hey, ahead. I think it's time we evaluate a little bit of the uh, appetizer that Rolos has kind of given us with these signings because 
They've been cooking, bro. They've been playing great. They've been our best players, essentially. Rolos, Rolos uh, uh, signings. I mean, that's like, to we're me. We're talking Biru. We're talking Biru, Diego Rubio. Jader O'Brien. Rubio is just, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, they're hungry. They're new. And it just seems to, this guy's cooking, bro. Like, it's almost like, uh, hey, look look, look what you're seeing, bro. I got you. 100%. So, it, it makes me even more excited of what's to come, bro. We just got to be patient. We just got to be patient. I mean, now more than ever, let Rodo cook is what yeah, B is saying. Rodo cook, let Rodo cook. Well, we're, we're, what we're having now is a little appetizer, and it's fire. Now, all right. We're eating at Fogo de Chao, apparently. B yeah. pretty much is saying Fogo de Chao. I'm, I'm kind of siding with Bali. Like, hey, it's it's been almost a year. It's been a long time. I mean, we love it right now. Everyone's happy. You know, we're smiling. You know, yeah, but there's a bigger picture to this. And, I mean, to me... To me, Rodo has, he can cook, he can cook all he wants. You know, he's going to keep cooking, he's going to bring great players. But for us to win a chip, for us to be champions, we have to change a coach. That's the meal. And, Championship. Um, yep. That's the meal. So to me, that we're, we're looking good. All right, all right. Now, okay, guys, I want to move on to some post-match quotes from Josh Wolf. Now, I want, I'm wondering if this was the best of Wolf we've seen at a presser because he was extremely honest in what he had to say. Now, some quick uh, quotes here. He, he says, we know fans, media, owners, they care about winning. How we win, I'm sure most of you guys could care less. I care about that. It's my job. He also says that him and Rodo have a philosophy that they want to follow and how they want to have things done. Me B. and Rodo. Keep that in mind. Yeah, Rodo and I. Rodo and I. Rodo and I. <laughs> great, great pick on that, yeah, B. Now, yeah. okay, what are your thoughts on, on Josh Wolf post-match, what he had to say? Some folks are saying that he. it seems like he's feeling the pressure because he's constantly shouting out the fans in the last two games. He's, he's giving the fans a lot he's of credit. And some people are saying, oh, now he's coming around to the fans because – he sees the comments on the Where Else in TV page. He keeps up with what people <laughs> well, are, are saying. Apparently, he said he doesn't. You know? Your thoughts? Yeah, no, like you definitely saw a little bit of, of uh, different from Wolf, a little bit of sassiness maybe. I don't know. A little like, bit. A little the bit best of that. Of Wolf. You know, so a little bit of, I don't know, shots at the media a little bit. You know, hey, you're calling me out, you know. So, yeah, I mean, he's praising the fans. You got to you gotta praise the fans, bro. You, you gotta, got to. You have to. We're one of the best fans in the league, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're seeing a little bit more and more from Wolf. You know, he's not doing this. He's not. He did that last week. So let's <laughs> not. Let's, he, let's, he did that last week. But, Bali, I want to get you in on this one, man. Now, we did get the win. We did score four goals. We talked about how it's a red flag that we conceded three. Josh Wolf was critical, right? He says this. He says, we have to do a better job when we have those numbers of closing down the ball, killing opportunities. Of, uh, of course, against San Jose, they get three goals. They could have had more. They get one called back that you maybe some other ref doesn't call it back, right? And there was some uh, says by Stuber that he really had to make because the ball was going into the back of the net. But Joshua, very critical of his defense. And we have to be critical ourselves here because the defense moving forward, like B said, it's not sustainable. You can't bank on conceding three and scoring four constantly. So your thoughts on what Joshua had to say post-match? He, he was critical. I agree. I mean, he knows that you know our defense is struggling and we need to improve. We need to find answers. And three goals at home. I mean, come on now. I mean, that, that's uh, that's a lot. You know, we have to we have to tighten up in the back. Hundred percent. Big game next week. Also, hopefully we Saint improve. Louis. Yeah, hopefully we improve. Hopefully we get. I mean, I don't know how Leo, how far Leo has, but nah, he's still out. Hopefully he gets another month. Better quick. Zan. Zan. Two three hopefully, weeks. Hopefully two three weeks. John. 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 Zanny. John. Zanny. John. <laughs> <laughs> we've been we, respect Zan them. respect yeah because yeah, we gave him a little bit of, we called him Zanny in the beginning Zanny, right yeah, like yeah, little nickname yeah. Zanny and Zanny. Z. Z apparently he doesn't like Zanny at all For Zanny he well hates I mean it's it. it's, it's it? like yeah. Zanny I heard through the through the grapevine, the grapevine. he doesn't like Zanny so it's, but <laughs> anyways just a couple more quotes here Coach Wolf he goes on to say this about Seba because of course he was talked about yeah. uh, um, last night post match. Wolf says this. He says, Seba Drusi is, again, one of the best players in the league. It's not surprising we went two in a row with him on the field. Kind of going off of what Tucker right. said in fan reactions and on the space. Tucker, some, some wild takes, claiming that Drusi is currently better than Leo Messi, and he compared Josh Wolf to Xavi Alonso and Leverkusen. That was wild, bro. <laughs> he, really, he, he, really said <laughs> he really said that. Mind you, Tucker, I, I mean, some folks are saying that's a good take. That's shocking. Who's right. saying that's, that's a good take? Some folks are saying, I'm not going to name but some folks are saying it's a good take. They asked me to not name yeah. him. Look, I love my G Tucker, bro. I love him. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't think. I mean, calling Wolf Shabby from Shabby Lonzo. He said wild. it was a wild comparison, but he was just yeah. trying to compare. You know, it was. I get it. Maybe he's reaching. Like Jesse March or something. Uh, <laughs> Dang, something like that. Come on. Th hey, but thoughts on uh, uh, Seba? We talked bro. about him earlier, but yeah, I mean, he's Wolf that guy, giving him bro. His he's that guy. He is Austin. 
Austin is juicy. Juicy is Austin, bro. Homies that don't even really follow the league share this picture. You know, yeah. share the goal. It resonates with everybody. If you're not, if you're living in this city, you saw that goal. You saw that post. You saw that celebration, bro. And people were sharing it because of that. And uh, if if it, he's our, he's that guy, bro. Like I would say, like it, it, you go to fans that don't follow Austin. Name a player, Drewsy. That's it. Boom. Name a player, Drewsy. That's it. He's Save that him. guy for us, bro. He's that guy. I mean, this guy's been all over the world. You know, he has stories from River Play. He's been in Russia. There's stories there, and there's MVPs, other players. There's other players chips. that have stories of him. Yeah. So he's 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 the the guy that is pretty much like our ace. You oh, know? he he's definitely is the main piece on the chessboard for us in FC. He's if our goat. We're being honest. He's our goat. You know, I, I think he is. Yeah. Hundred percent. I think he is. And and if if this team is gonna win a chip in the next two to three years. It has to be with Seba. The day he leaves Austin FC and we don't have a replacement right then and there, we're going to struggle, mate. With Rodo, I don't, Big time. I don't think that will happen. Big though. time. But honestly. Hopefully he stays. But if Rodo maybe com- tells him, hey, there, I'm building something but, special. But hold on. There, there's no danger of, of Seba leaving Austin FC, especially after the kind of uh, celebration that he had in that fourth goal. You know, he showed Jude. his jersey, went to, the, went to the fans, and the Jude. It shows that. He loves the club. What is what does that celebration tell you? Like, what, 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 you're obviously a Madrid fan. Yeah. When Jude does it, what's his what's that message? Or what is it? It's, it's pretty much saying I'm, like, I'm, him. I'm I'm here for you. Like this th- this is what I can do for you. Oh man, fire! Like I'm here working for you. Like fire. like is this is this what you want? Here you go. Fire! This this is what I'm doing. Fire, bro. He's that to me, guy. Bro. To me, that's that's what it translates to. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. And of course, beautiful. Yeah. Of course, yeah. agree. But just agree. one more thing that Joshua says, and on the stadium, they really put a lot of emphasis on the atmosphere. He says, obviously, an exciting and entertaining game. A lot of credit goes to the fans, the fans in the entire stadium, and it felt it, it feels like the, the the stadium is working more as a unit with chance. More people are learning them. I think the influence is going more to other sections like the North End. And there's people in those sections that are doing a lot of work by chanting themselves. And it's also spreading bit by bit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And my take on that is I think it, I think the, I, from what I got, bro, I think the, the La Murga and Los Verdes and the support, I think they were a bit galvanized in a way because they were mm-hmm. coming under criticism. They were coming under criticism about chants when they're not supposed to, whatever. They came under fire. They came under fire. And I think they triple double down and said, nah. They clapped back. They they said, nah, we're gonna keep it. And I think it's it we witnessed the reason. Seem, it seems like everybody's taking shots at, at you. The silence. <laughs> at me, at what? You, at me. You you called for it, man. I, I, I was I was you know what? I'll take the L. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take no. it. But it. But it's not much of an L. It, Maybe it's not the moment. It's it's not the moment. It's an L, mate. It's an L. But but I do say this, bro, like I was look to, to be real, to be honest with you. I was kind of you know in that same boat with you, bro. for sure. You know, I was a lot of fans for were. sure, and I think that I was proven. I think same thing with you, bro. I don't know if you feel the same we way. You were but proven wrong. Not not really wrong, but I was shown. Hmm. Look, bro, this is why hmm. we do. Okay, That's we'll fair. come That's under fair. criticism when things aren't working out, and we'll take the heat. But it's worth it for moments like this. And honestly, for sure. I agree, bro. I like I it. I agree. I like it. Now, real quick, some open-ended questions. I really want to get y'all's take on this. We hear it from Tucker in the fan reactions. And there was a fan jumping around in front of us during fan reactions saying, Wolf in, Wolf in, Yeah, wolf don't, ever, don't in. ever do that again. I'm not in front of my face ever again. And either. Tucker, <laughs> Tucker, <laughs> Tucker, I mean, he says, me. Bali, calma. Right, Tuck, you. please. We're on set. <laughs> Tucker, he says, Wolf is earning my trust back with back-to-back wins coming back against opponents. He's saying that this is a step for Wolf earning the fans' trust back. And I got to ask you, Bali. I got to ask you because Wolf got to do a lot to get your, your, your trust back. But with these two wins, I mean, you, you sound different. You're also smiling. Is Wolf earning the trust back from Bali's army? I'm smiling because I partied hard this weekend, oh, okay. okay? You know, and oh, I had a great fault. weekend, you know. He's thinking back. You know, I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> let, 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 let me not say anything. No, let, me not, let me not say anything. But, hey, the hey, but, um, hey, we're getting wins. That's what matters. You know, we're, 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 we're playing at home. We're still struggling in the back. Okay? I want, what I want, I want us to win. That's the best what I want. I want us to win. Okay? Oh, oh, whoa. Oh, Paul, go ahead. What, what, what was that? What was it that, was, bro? It was, it was Brad. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it was Brad. So, I mean, the bigger picture is, I don't see us winning anything with this coach. Oh. 
point blank period. Silverware. There's nothing that you can say to change my mind. Okay. Or do. Or do. So what we have to do now is when? we're gonna com- we're gonna keep continuing backing the team. But the bigger picture is that we won't win anything with this coach. You're still firm, Wolf. So out. I'm. That's not gonna change. That still is not firm, gonna Wolf change. Out. That still is firm. not gonna change. That still is not firm. Gonna change. Can you say it? Wolf out, and it's not gonna change. Jeez. It's not gonna change. Now, B, I do want to switch over the conversation to you, mate. Tucker, the point that he made, and I, I want to, you know, sorry to use his his his, his name been, on the podcast. We've, so been, we've much. been using it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, GA, sorry, hey, Tucker. 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 But his take, his, his take just stood out to me yeah. because I know <laughs> I know that there's people leaving that stadium that are saying Wolf in, that are saying, you see, this is why we want Wolf because the thing because the moments like yeah. this. So I, I want to ask you: Is the tide turning, or is it still firm Wolf out? Let's be real, man. No, I think that the winds calm it down. Yeah, they calm it down. Yeah. You know, they okay. calm it down. You know, okay. but it's like you know, yeah, you know, fans are hungry. You're giving us a couple cookies here and there. We're fine. We're eating. We're, we're, that's winds. Calm it down. But I, 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 look, I don't know how y'all might take this, but I might. I think I disagree with with uh, Tucker, bro. Be- because what are your points? Because I would have been on that boat, bro. Had we won this game three four nil, I would have okay. been on this boat. Had we dominated, just showed our force and won this game comfortably. The fact that we had to come back with the last kick of the game from our Drewsy Dior, I, I think the players the players, and Drewsy get this bulk of the credit, bro. I don't think it falls on Wolf, bro. I mean, sure, maybe he motivated the guys in halftime. We don't know. Yeah. But I think uh, this falls more on the players' resiliency. And, and, and hunger to, to to not concede and not lose this game. So seventy five percent players, twenty five Josh Wolf, credit uh, yeah, wise. That sounds fair. Seventy five, twenty five. Is that I, the same no, meter I mean, you would give him? Yeah, and I I also give you know we also have to give credit to Josh Wolf because he he also knows the risk. He also knows that hey, I need to save my job. Okay, I need to put the best starting eleven out there. So what did he do? He benched Rigoni. Yeah, he kept two sticking with Rigoni. Two games kept, kept playing him. Kept playing him. Kept playing him. Kept playing him. He's th- you're risking your job doing that, Josh. Hey man, you're right, Bali. I want to start him again. The guy hasn't played for two games. Yeah. yeah, on the bench, and we look so much better with that. And him. I hope he doesn't, bro. Now, why why wasn't this done before? Because why wasn't I think the this pressure, done before? I think the pressure came. I think the pressure came. You all see, you see how easy it it is to to bench Emmy. Fans have been calling for it all last season. It was never done. Finally, this year, maybe he's finally under hot, under the hot seat from ownership. Enough pressure enough you know uh, enough time on the hot seat to tell him you know what you're not doing it for me you're going to the bench and he also touched up on that he said that it's all because of performances he yeah. emmy is not performing well enough to get into the winning team and that's what the roster is right now. that's what the lineup is right now they won against dallas they repeated against uh san jose they won again and i don't know if there's going to be any changes in st louis there won't be he'll play he'll play the same starting 11 because you know he's getting he's getting results now but okay th- th- there might be some changes to that starting lineup but one thing is for sure Rigoni is not part of the plan anymore nah, bro. Rigoni also, is not part of the plan what's also shocking was it Giazzi's artist you know this is this is Josh Wolf's Bench guy too. He, Bench yeah, too. He, he came because Josh Wolf gave him the call and said I want you here and now he's on the bench also that's going so to your point this is also yeah. I'm, I also have to give uh, uh, right. Josh Wolf credit right. now r- one more uh, player you know kind of gone and now here comparison that we're doing here Biru and Jean Komenich mm-hmm. Now, we had that argument a couple uh, weeks ago. I was really rooting for Jean, for Z, for Kolmanich. Seems like he's a bit of an injury-prone player. Now, Biru, he comes in. He's scoring goals. But defensively, does Biru do, does Biru do the job? He had a good instance in, in the game. But for a left back, do you want him to attack more or do you need him to defend more? Is this, is this is Joshua's system asking for more attack from those left backs? I think it is. Yeah. So is Biru the guy? Vito's the guy. Vito's the guy. I mean, just let him adapt a little bit more. You know, yes, his defending is okay, but him going forward, I mean, oh my God, just the shot that he scored. I mean, last game. Oh my God. I mean, just I'm, I'm the guy's special. I'm just, also, I'm just Jean, curious for his defensive work. Let's not say Jean isn't a defensive defensive unit either, bro. You know what I mean? Jean Coleman isn't really a. He's not a Nick Nick Lima defensive unit. You know what I mean? And so it doesn't really. It's who. It's who out of the two can provide offensively that's gonna get the start, in my opinion. Okay. And you know, on the other side, Gallagher, we know he's not a defensive unit. We he's not a defender, so we got two fullbacks that are prioritizing going forward. And that just says a lot about how Wolf wants to play. And um, yeah, I mean, just to take it back a little bit, just, just real quick on the on the on the Rigoni thing. I knew like, you were gonna go back to him. It's because bro, how did I know? Because 
bro, it, you, you said he felt the pressure. Sure, he did feel the pressure. And maybe he, a coach wants to put the best players that he can out there to, to, to win the game, bro. For sure. And, and I feel like he was playing Rigoni. He's the DP. He was signed. He needed to provide something. I think there was pressure up above to try to get something out of this guy, bro. Okay, and and I think worship. now we've, it's we've seen that before. Yeah, and we've and now now it's it's Dunzos. Now you're on your way out. No more. No more. It's done. I think we're seeing that, bro. Oh, that's a really good point, B. Yeah, I, I honestly think that's a good point. Now there was a, a video that George posted or he shared on on his episode of I think it was FCTV where Precourt is hugging Josh Wolf, kind of very passionately, like saying, "My bro." You're still, a, you know, you still got the job, you know, like <laughs> oh, really? pretty that's much what that's what that's it what is. Pretty much that's what it is, mate. Okay. <laughs> and I, I think Josh Wolf, like just like you said, but he has he has nothing to lose anymore. No, yeah. bro. He has yeah. nothing. He, there's going no, for there's it. no more he, friendships he, that he needs to save moving forward. It's good point. But I mean, he would have got criticism if he would have been going it early, early on. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Or well, maybe from the the big news media, sure, like the Tom Bogarts and stuff like, like that. Damn, yeah, DP player, sure. just. What a what a horrendous mistake. So okay, I see what you're saying. You're saying that the people that made the financial decision to bring this guy here wanted to save themselves the embarrassment of this transaction absolutely blowing up in their face that they forced Josh Wolf to continue playing Rigoni, 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 even though he continued to drop stinker after stinker after stinker, leading us to the exact point now where Owen Wolf is playing at the right wing, twenty twenty four. Yeah, and it's crazy. That's what I think, bro. You, you yeah. damn, you <gasps> damn, you summed it up. Yeah. It's like when you buy something that's expensive, and you're stuck with it. And you got to use it. Somebody has to take the blame. Somebody has to take the blame, and Josh Wolf took the heat. It's, he has to, bro. He has Sheesh. to. And I think it's gotten to a point now where it's done. It's done. This, it's done this project is obviously a freaking failure. You're done. Done. Rodo, Rodo also arrived and he's Rodo taken arrived. out the trash. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. taken out the trash and the guys that he's brought in have been cooking. I mean, come on. Well, I'm, I'm excited what for What does this tell you about what's coming? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, cooking. Really he's cooking. Yeah. That's a really good point. I think it was the Ribbonator that had a tweet out that he was saying how all of the Rodo guys are the ones scoring goals. So, Rodo. Yeah, hungry. Rodo, hungry. thank you. Cooking, cooking. Thank you, Rodo. Yeah. But, uh, okay, guys, just one more thing that I have here the Wolf Out Meter. Where is it at now? It's on ice. The wolf out meter, where is it at? Uh, what are the levels? Green, now, yellow, I mean, red? Yeah, green, yellow, red. I think it's yellow. It's yellow? I think so. Ah, I, don't is know, it? As, as, I don't know. Well, as, actually, it can be. It, it's, 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 it's red, orange, yellow. Green. Then it's, what is it, blue? Green? Green? I, I don't know. You're Something like that. Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. That's the, the which colors one, of Which the one's the worst? The red? Red is the worst. <sighs> Super red. Super red? Dark red. After two wins? Dark red. Six points Dark on the Dark red, Hernan. Okay, okay. Well, uh, let no, me no, I mean, look. I mean, Hernan, this doesn't change anything, bro. You want me to sit here? You want me to lie? You want me to, you want me to smile? You know, it's going to be okay. No, Hernan, I'm not going to do that. It's not okay. It's been way too long. Way too long, bro. So... Yes, we won. I'm happy, but it still will fail, and it's not going to change. What if it's I what if, what if I told you this? What if I told you that if the boys, the the team, held on to the wins against the likes of St. Louis and Philly, this Austin side would be Ooh. top of the West right now. Man, I, who is I it on? So. And, who and is who? it on? So. Who is it? I hope so. I hope so. Who is it? Listen to my boy. Who is it on, mate? Listen to my boy. I hope so. I hope so. The way we conceded that goal, bro, that doesn't fall on Wolf, mate. So. A deflected shot. Bro, you're right, bro. So. We we get I the three so. points against Philly and Saint, bro. I'm I'm the I'm wolf firmly meters wolf out, green, dude. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm firmly wolf out. I'm firmly I'm, wolf I'm out. I'm taking I'm taking it game by game, but it's wolf out right now. I'm wolf out. I'm like you said, nothing's gonna change, bro. I'm nothing's firmly wolf change. out, but I think the wolf out meter is more on an orange than a yellow, there or a red. Someone should make a meter and change it day game by game. Now, check this out. <laughs> check this out. If Josh Wolf wants to be a great sport, be a great professional, then I'm sure that he is, right? That one that he aspires to continue to be. Leave this club in a fashion where you continue to, to work day to day at a top level. If you know that you're going to be sacked soon, if there's conversations behind the scene where Rolo and Josh Wolf are saying, hey, I already got my guy. I, I've been hearing conversations of names that they're already looking into coach-wise. I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to share it, but I, I've been hearing conversations. Look, I'm not going to share it. I wouldn't put much weight on but that, they, they might even let him run his contract. They that's what I'm saying. His contract. They it's will, okay. bro. They that's okay. what I'm saying. But operate but at a high level. go after that. Operate at a high level until the very end. Don't don't act don't you know don't put tools down. Yeah. Going back to what B said back in what twenty twenty one. That's not. I don't think that's what coaches do, bro. I mean, maybe in higher levels, but 
I just can't fathom Wolf making decisions in the lineup or making decisions on players that is going to jeopardize his security or or lack of of winning. So, so just to put a, 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 an end to this topic, you think the last two wins have gave Wolf enough credit to send the Wolf out meter mm. back to the middle? No, I think just because of the manner and the wins. I mean, like I said, had we won like three, four convincingly, I would have agreed with you. But I think things are cool. I mean, you you feed us wins, things are gonna calm down, bro. That's how it is. We start to lose again. Shit ramps up again. Bro. Wolf Wolf mentioned that in the pressure. He says, "Oh, just like the media, just like you guys like to remind me when the when the losses start to pile up, it's about winning." And at the I end of the day, that's I, the that's the nature of this business. It's all about winning. It's I thought you don't. Winning. I thought you don't listen, bro. I it's thought you don't all watch that winning. stuff. It's all about winning. It seems like he does. This guy Wolf is just going back on a lot of stuff that he's been saying, mate. But uh, but all right, boys. Now, as B plugs in the, the uh, computer in the background, Bali, I want to move on to some of the last topics here on the pod. Now, we got St. Louis up next, mate. Uh, we had them recently at Q2 Stadium. Whatever happened against them happened. We couldn't finish the job. We shared points with them, mate. What kind of prediction do you have going into that match? Well, man, I have I have so many bad memories from St. Louis. I mean, just the uh, just the Kip Keller that was one of the craziest games, and also um, them when we played them at home when they trashed us like they scored like five or six zero on. I mean, it was like six, six five or six, six goals. Six. six. Worst oh defeated. It was six four yeah. though. It was a crazy six, game. Three, right? six, six three. Six three. Six three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, St. Louis has has just been a nightmare for us <laughs> since we played them since day one. But you know what? I have a good feeling, man. Oh, I have okay. a good feeling. Hopefully. And, and, well, Check this out. I'll take a tie. Real quick, they just played Dallas April 6th, a couple of days ago. They had 27 shots on Dallas, but the game ended nil nil. Game wow. ended nil nil. They couldn't beat Dallas. So that means they'll have 40 on us. What does bro. that say? I'm mean, nah, <laughs> <laughs> <God, God, God. laughs> I, I, I think some of those are going in on our side. I'm with Bali. Now, today on Discord, Vanilla asked, like, hey, what if we get nine points out of the three? That'd be great. Well, what would great. that do to the wolf out meter? I mean, we we, we, we're, we already oh talked about it. Well, we talked oh, about so it. We you, already talked you, about you it. You just you just brought to fruition a meter. Somewhere is gonna someone's uh, gonna post a picture with a meter. We on already it. talked about it, right? But I mean, if this if this team gets nine points off the skiff off the last three, too early. They're bro. gonna be talked about. I it's mean, too early. And, and all also, these all these wins do, bro, is just cool the waters. That's yeah. all they're doing. That's all they're doing. I don't know. Once we get to the business end of the season, then we can. Are the fans looking too much into it? Are they looking too much into it? No. I'm trying to say? I mean, we look too much into whatever. I mean, this is our club. We love yeah. this club. We'll, we'll fucking we'll start raiding the cooks, bro. You know, that's how we, we, we roll. Now, know? Austin, St. Louis, Sunday, April 14th, 3.45 p.m. That is central time. St. Louis has the 55% advantage. Draw is at 24%. Austin percentage for them to win is at 21. Is that fair, B? I think St. so. St. Louis the favorites? I think so. And and also, let's, not, let's be real. St. Louis does have... A, a bit of a, a atmosphere in their stadium as well, so yeah, they won't be walking into an empty Colorado stadium or an empty Houston stadium or anything like that. They will be walking coming into a rocking St. Louis stadium. So, I'm, I'm I agree with Bali as well as you. I'm down for a point. I'm down. I'll take I'll take I'll a take point. A point. Yeah, I'll be I'm happy. Down. I'm no, down. this will be more even than folks at home think, mate. Austin FC finds himself in eighth place. They have nine points. St. Louis they are in eleventh, but just one point difference. They have eight points. B. Eight points, just a one point difference, much like the EPL Bali. I know you know you know a lot about that right now. But if Austin wins, they would potentially have twelve points currently. LA Galaxy, that's a that's sorry, they wouldn't have twelve points. I'm tripping. Uh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tripping. They would have twelve points. They would have twelve points. Nine plus three is twelve. It's still too early though, bro. The galaxy has twelve. That would propel them to a spot. That would be playoff. awesome. That, that would be a, that w- it's a playoff spot. That's that's us being the playoffs. That's what Rother wants. Remember, he said playoffs. playoffs is the goal. We'll make playoffs, and we'll see what happens. Are we gonna win it? No. Now I might be. Know, I mean, I'll be on, real. Bro. I mean, not, I mean, I, I don't think with this coach we won't win it. I'm, We've been there before. Did we win it? No, we didn't. We had Regoni starting. Yeah. We were not yeah, playing him anymore, and we play and better we without him. You, you just, yeah, this, so. this, bro, this, this, this Josh Wolf can I never mean, win with you, bro. We'll Josh see. Wolf can we'll never. I'm, I'm Wolf like out, but he, he can said, never we'll win see. with like you, bro. He said, man, at least he's being real about it. Nothing will change his mind, bro. So he's like true. a, like a, I don't know, like a, like a cult mind or something. He's like a, uh, like a like Real Madrid fan, like a being, Trump supporter or something. Being realistic. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> like I'm just a, being you know, realistic. Something. I'm just being realistic. He's yeah. just he's he's like radical right, radical left. Uh, he's all the way. Wherever. He's all the way. He's, he's all, all the way, way wherever. Yeah, I can't you know? wait for us to win. I can't wait. For, I want to. I want to see. I want to watch a, a game at Q two, a playoff game at Q two this I season. Can. I want to so bad. Please. I respect that's, it. That's please, the, Josh. I respect his takes because please, the last two wins shouldn't be enough to change Josh Wolf's face. Hundred percent. Shouldn't at all. But if the third 
third win comes, and, still and then that fourth win comes, and then and, and then, then and maybe and then, it's and maybe it's four in a row, five, and then six, and then we play better, and then we we improve, and then we we kind of go down, and then we play a little That's bit better, a typical MLS and season. then we make it to the playoffs, and then we get kicked out. <laughs> and then what happens? Yeah, there you go, bro. That's your season right there, bro. There, I just, I just okay. told you the season. If that's the season, do you not consider that a achievement? You do not consider that positive for yeah, a team to make it into the playoffs, course, even though they get knocked yeah, of out. Of course, of course. The of exposure, course. the course, yes. experience for the players. Yes. Yes, then you can course. sell potentially this guy there, that guy there. Yeah, that yeah, helps. Yeah, yeah. You gotta find Hernan, the positives Hernan, to everything. Hernan, I wanna. Oh, of course, of course. No, 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 no. Listen to me, listen to me. Listen, listen. Bro, this guy thinks I don't want to win the trophy. Listen to me, listen to me. I want to win it, Ernan. I want to win the trophy. I don't want to go. I want to win it. Look, all I'm saying is we have a summer window in between here and then, okay? And if we're letting Rodo cook, you better sit your butt in that table, sit your butt down in that chair. And eat what he's gonna put on that table, man. Yeah. And what he's been what he's been cooking lately? Appetizer, Rubio, Biru, breadsticks, Rigoni to the bench. That could have been his choice. Nah, I'm not. I'm not. That gonna could have been cheese his call. Fries, cheese fries. I'm not that could have been his call. I'm loving what, what he's bringing to the table. And Let's if he if he brings more, <laughs> I'll eat that too. But that's gonna be that's gonna be that kind of season though, bro. Like even <laughs> even no in, diddy. <laughs> no diddy. even in even in the in the mid season the summer, bring players in. They gotta get acclimated up for to sure, date. For it's, sure. It's that kind of season. That's yes, why that's why yes. I'm so confident that he's gonna get. He's gonna now, run out his contract, bro. Now, all right, boy. Yeah. Let's let's come back down to earth. Score prediction for the St. Louis uh, away match. It is away. It's at, at City Park. That's supposed to be the soccer mecca of the United States. Is it? Who said that? Uh, soccer pundits. Mm. The soccer experts? pundits. <laughs> the experts. I see a two-two, bro. Two-two. High scoring match. Yeah, Another, a four-goal thriller. Yeah. High scoring match. Bali. Man, because we ain't keeping a clean sheet, are we? <laughs> Are we? No, That's what I'm asking. So. I'm asking. You know what? I think, man, I'm going for two one. Two one for. I I think we I think we we we, we pull some we get some of that of it. I think we we go ahead, Ooh, we go to San Luis and we we, we get come, we some three we come points? back with three points. I think so. Yeah. Now for we, some reason I just feel like we I feel like we we we'll show something. We do have to know, Bali. They're not looking the the prettiest. Yeah, they just not, lost to Ross Salt Lake three to one. They tied against DC United two to two. And they tied against the LA Galaxy three three. The Galaxy had ten men. They got a they got a red card. And they tied against Austin FC two to two. Austin FC is definitely trending on the up. We'll see what happens against St. Louis, mate. Yeah, I see a two one man. Hopefully, Druzy becomes Druzy Dior and he 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 takes over. Takes over. He is Druzy Dior. Yeah, he so is. So your is. score prediction was a two one. Yeah, I, I think B, we get two out two. I'm gonna go with the more conservative. I'm gonna go with the one one. I'm yeah, go with the one one, good too, and one, one. before folks say, "Hey, what's up? You were you were building up to this moment. Why are you? Why, why do you have the team getting a draw away from home? I think that's an achievement. Yeah, I'll take it all at day. At this I'll point, I think I, I honestly, at this point, for Austin FC to go to St. Louis, go to City Park, look them in the eye, take a point back to Austin, that's an achievement at this at this point in the season, at this point in your current form as a team, as a squad, as a unit. It's a good thing. I think achievement's a strong word there to use, but eh, I'm yeah, down for that, a point. Yeah, 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 I'm I down for so a too. point. Bit, bit I'll take a point. A bit harsh. A bit harsh. <laughs> I'll, ta- I'll <laughs> harsh. take a point. You know, but I'll take a point too. hopefully, you know, th- that stadium, that full, the, that full stadium, that those fans motivate our players. Dude. Let's sh- let's shut these guys up. Hopefully. Let's shut them up. Okay. You know, they embarrassed us here last last year. Let's come back. Let's show okay, them that I we're like a different that. team. I like that. Let's I like keep that motivated. Motiva- let's keep that moment. Let's keep that motivation. Let's keep that mindset. I like that. I like that. Well, St. Louis, Austin FC, that game is coming up. We just previewed it right now. We got pretty much positive vibes coming from yeah. the Top Fly Pod. Uh, but okay, gentlemen. Now, before we get out of here, we are going to talk about the Champions League in the midweek Patreon episode for the people that are on the Patreon for the Discord members. But real quick, just real quick, some some light predictions. We got Arsenal Bayern tomorrow at two, and then Madrid City tomorrow at two p.m. B your uh, prediction for those matches. Well, I mean, I got City winning. Uh but of course. The, 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 Ridiculous I, I would take. have I would have I would I, I, I would say Bayern, but bro. Uh, man, that's that's it's it's becoming a little more tricky because of the manner and way Arsenal are playing compared to how Bayern are playing. I mean, Bayern are plus 320 last time I checked, plus 350, bro. I mean, Arsenal are heavy favorites. They're not just favorites, they're freaking favorites. So uh, I'm gonna have to go with Bayern as well, bro. Mm. After all that talk, Bayern. So Bayern and City. And City. Yeah. Bali, who you got, mate? Madrid and Arsenal. You know, I'm. Uh, okay. I said it. You know, and I'm. I'm looking forward, and I, I'm not. I'm, and I'm not looking back. You know, um, I want Madrid. That's <laughs> who I want, and that's the only team that I want in this Champions League next round. 
and um, I'm, we're coming. Bold, we bold want state. Madrid, and that's bold all state. we want. Now, tomorrow at 2 p.m., those games are going to be very exciting. Make sure to watch that. Real Madrid, of course, I got them in that matchup against City. There's players that are going to be out for Man City. No, I think Kyle, Kyle, Walker? Kyle Walker is out. Kyle Walker? Who's going to guard Walker? Vini? If, if Kyle Walker was there, how was uh, he, he going to guard Vini? He did Vini? it already, though. I mean, come on. Vini is completely different now. A hundred percent different. He's now. done it though. Check this out. It's gonna be a tough game though. for Madrid, but bro, I think they can pull bro, through. Honestly, Osiel on uh, uh, Discord. Yeah. I love his Real Madrid takes, bro. I'm sure you do, bro. I love his I'm Real sure Madrid takes, bro. I like sure Lucas's takes too. I love yeah. Lucas's. I'm takes. sure you hate Eric's. I mean, yeah, Eric, I'm not surprised. Uh, I was about to say something, but I forgot. <laughs> I actually remembered. I can't say it on the pod about Eric. So. Okay, okay. Okay. Eric coming under fire. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I don't no. want to say why. I don't want to say why. I don't want to say Eric's why. Eric's becoming a bit of a... a why scene. did he wear that to the... I don't know. Okay. Anyways, yeah. but all right, guys. We're going to get out of here. We're about at the hour mark for the for the episode. But thank you for joining us for another episode. We'll be, we'll be back for more midweek for the Patreon episode. And then we'll be back also to review the St. Louis match yeah. and some more uh, best of world football topics. But that's for, it for me, boys. You ready? Yeah. Let's I mean, go. Uh, if you... I mean... If you want more episodes, check out the Patreon. Join our Patreon Discord. I mean, we have awesome conversations on Discord. We're getting to know people by their names on yeah. there. It's, it's it's awesome. So if you want to be uh, involved in that and get an extra episode, go ahead and check our Patreon out. Uh, it's in the links everywhere. Boys, we forgot to mention one thing, one What's important that? topic, and we cannot get out of here before talking about it. No, so Ooh. hopefully people stayed until the very end. But some transfer rumors that dropped late. Oh, yeah. Just even, super yeah. quick, boys. Yeah, Just true. real quick. Now, according to Uriel Lucht, and we found out later that it wasn't his information. It was Lucas Gonzalez's information. It was back and forth. But Austin FC is after Argentine winger Brian Aguirre. The club is sending scouts to watch him play against Boca Juniors today. Now, that was in the past. Uh, that was a couple of days ago. They lost that game to Boca 3-1, to one, if I'm not mistaken. But, B, I mean, your thoughts on that because uh, this is Austin FC trying to do some some work yeah i mean they're looking south america bro you know argentine argentine connection maybe we get get some some connection with drew c uh i mean we got this whole south american vibe in the squad so yeah i mean look like we said earlier in the pod bro look what look what he's brought in so far i mean i'm excited to to, to see what what comes next and uh, i don't know if it's too early to say this but i'm all in on i mean no i've been saying this i'm all in on Rolo, bro I, I trust his judgment his scouts so interesting interesting to see that i mean uh from new boys right um new old boys yeah, yeah. maxi's old club messi's old, Messi's club. old club so yeah now brian aguirre in the loss he saw 26 minutes he had one successful dribble attempt 100 percent on that 75 percent <laughs> pass accuracy he had a 6.5 match rating like i said and a yellow card is what he picked up but now, Bali, before I get your take, there's more to it because the information didn't stop there. We got this information from, like I said, Lucas Gonzalez, who ha apparently had the info from the get-go. In addition to Brian Aguirre, Ian Glavinovic and Francisco Gonzalez are also on the watch list for Austin FC scouts traveling to Argentina to watch the match between Newell's Old Boys and Boca Juniors. Glavinovic, he's an Argentine and Croatian. I'm sure you know how that happens. He's 22 years old. Center back with a future in the Argentine national team. And Gonzalez, the guy here on the left on the edit, he's Argentine. He's 23 years old. He's left right winger with speed and great 1v1 abilities, mate. Good winger with 1v1 abilities. It's great to say that. Now, your thoughts on those boys? Thoughts on that rumor, possibly? I'm, I'm happy. I'm just like, like we say, you know, let all the cook. You know, he's cooking and um, I trust him 100%, you know, and if he feels like he's a. Those are the players that are, they fit best for our team. Then bring them on, you know. And I'm loving that the scouts are going around and, and they're they're being active. They're they're looking for forward for our players, you know, to, to attackers. Yeah, our attackers to to improve our squad because that's all. At the end of the day, that's what we need. We need players to improve our squad, not also you know the the first team, but also FC though, you know. Of course. I mean, all around, you know. Of course. And I'm um, I'm happy. I'm happy about it. Now, Ian Glavinovich, he saw 90 minutes. Like I said, he has a future in the Argentine national team. He already has appearances with the U23s. Uh, he had two out of three ground duels won, two out of four aerial duels won. Uh, he had one foul. He had 48 touches with 73% ball uh, pass accuracy, right? And then Francisco Gonzalez, 64 minutes played B, 45% pass accuracy, not the best. He's a winger. Uh, but, again, you also got to remember they're playing Boca Juniors. They probably didn't really have much of a chance. I don't pay attention much to this league to know what their current form is as a club. But Austin FC, like like we said, doing some business. 
Let them cook. Trying bro. to. We're scouting. Let them cook. Let them cook. Trying to. Now, Scout th- everywhere. The fans, the followers on uh, Instagram and on Twitter, they were uh, down with this. They were like, hey, let's do it. Let's, let's go after it. these guys. Well, it's cooking. Now, all right. We, 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 we can get out the, the studio now. Uh, that's yeah, the Bobby end of the go, episode. Bali, gotta go back to work, right? you got to go back to work, my G. <laughs> but all right, bit of a late episode, late drop. Sorry about that. We took Sunday off, but we're back, and we'll be back for more, like I said, against St. Louis. So have a good day. Have a good night, everybody. And be safe.